Welcome to the Ty and Rye, the Finance Guys podcast, covering weekly investment news, important financial topics, and expert interviews. We want to help you become more knowledgeable about the financial world around you. This is not an offer to sell you anything, and remember, past performance doesn't indicate future results. Now your hosts, Ty Hansen and Ryan Robertson. Hello, welcome to another episode of Ty and Rye, the Finance Guys. I am Ty Hansen, and I'm actually going to be solo today. Ryan, uh, Ryan had a couple of other commitments, and so uh, so I'll take the reins this week. We're going to do a little bit of a different kind of hybrid style. Uh, I was out of town end of last week, so I didn't end up doing a market mini, and so and this is actually going to be the market mini for this week. So we're going to kind of make it the, the an episode slash market mini all in one, or or maybe just an extended version or a little bit longer discussed market mini. And the reason for that is really. This uh, this week's been a little bonkers in the market. So uh, if you haven't already, I would say don't, don't look at your portfolio for the week. And it's 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 not going to sit well. So, anyways, I I don't you know don't mean to joke around. Obviously, it's never fun to lose in the markets. But uh, yeah, let's let's talk about it. Let's see what's going on. I want to talk about different parts of the market, things we're seeing. You know, nobody knows exactly where we're going. Nobody does. But what I want to talk about is, you know, should we head for the hills? What are the trends looking like? Uh, you know, is everything doom and gloom? And, and again, I don't know exactly where it's going, but, but we can actually talk about some market indicators, right? And see what, what that means and, and where we're at with everything. So, And from there, obviously, we can make some hopefully better, better decisions, make some educated decisions. Uh, I do. OK, so a couple things. The market is down this week. The, uh, the actual S and P 500 is down uh, almost about five, a little over five and a half percent, down five and a half percent. Tech taking the biggest hit this week, really. So on the year, technology is down more than ten percent on the year. It's actually one of the worst starts for tech it, since uh, I think since two thousand eight. So it's been a crazy, crazy start to say the least. The the last five days, uh, let me switch over really fast. Uh, the last five days, yeah, again, so tech and 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 um, small cap really taking the biggest, you know, kind of the the brunt of this beating, if you will. It was. I want to do look at some of the market sectors because you know, even though, so so it's it's interesting. We got to think about this. We got to we got to make sure we're not getting, you know, too frightened of the markets just because you know tech is is taking such a big hit and and you know things that are things that are really what, what's happening is. More growth, things that are more growth oriented are really taking a beating. But if we look, so like utilities this week are pretty close to flat. Uh, they're barely down. Energy's down about 1%. But on the year, energy's actually still up over 14%. So energy's doing well. Uh, also, two gold starting to do a little bit better. So, so we're, we are seeing things that that do well in a downward trending market, right? There's still pieces and still some some areas of relief, you know, in the markets that, that we are you know, still seeing weather the storm okay. So the idea here is okay. Well, why tie? What's going on? Well, I mean, we've been talking about this for a while. We know what's going on. We really do. It's you know, everybody's concerned with inflation and everybody's concerned that, you know, earnings are not going to be where we want them to be. And I think what we need to understand and take a step back and 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 realize is we, we knew this was coming, right? We knew that 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 we've been on a really good run post since post COVID, right? Since, you know, basically March of, of 2020. Now, I'm not saying it, that's an excuse and, and it's okay and, and, you know, having some losses, that's okay. It's fine. It's not a big deal. It is a big deal. It's never fun. My point is, there. it's big picture, right? It's understanding, okay, well, what do we think we're going to be over the next 6 to 12 months? Is this kind of the beginning of the end? Is this, is this going to be a big pop or not? Well, again, looking at the general market data, I'm still of the mindset that there is still growth to be had. But what we're experiencing is, again, there's kind of the shift from growth to value. 
we're seeing things, you know, that, that necess aren't necessarily super sexy, right? Like technology has been really hot and sexy the last couple of years. People are shifting away from those things that have a little bit more risk because, again, we know, we know inflation's high. We know interest rates are going up. You know, the bond market, um, and actually the bond market's doing okay, all things considered, knowing that rates are going to go up. But, you know, it's we, we knew this was coming. We, we know it's going to happen. So, again, I don't want to say it's an overreaction. I, I definitely think this is, you know, a, a normal, healthy correction in the market. But but that's what this is. This is people saying, oh, okay, well, you know, the, the party's, I don't want to say the party's over, but the party's dying down a little bit. And so, you know, we're seeing people kind of say, okay, well, I want to get out of technology. I want to get out of these riskier areas. And so so we're seeing that piece more aggressively sell off which is pushing the markets down and you know and so that's that's where we're at so it's like okay you know we we, we knew things weren't going to be as strong in 2022 nonetheless there still is some economic steam right um and in fact the you know some of the leading market uh, economic indices right and it, like we look at growth rates in the market and what what we expect our economy to do and and actually from december some of the leading economic indicators were a lot stronger than were, were originally projected. The other thing I want to kind of extrapolate from that as well is from that leading economic indicator, it's still forecasted, right? Even with these interest rate hikes, even with, you know, growth and, you know, some of the more speculative investments, even with those taking a tumble, it's still projected that our economy will expand by three and a half percent this year. Now, that's, I mean, three and a half percent, you know, obviously we'd like to see an even bigger expansion, but, but we got to, we got to, we got to kind of manage those expectations. You know, post COVID, the economy really had that boom, a lot of stimulus, people getting back to work, you know, things were, obviously we had supply chain issues, but, but the economy was expanding and it was a little bit more, more rapid than people thought. Now, as the dust is kind of settling, Right. And, and we're still wanting to look forward and say, OK, well, is there still some growth or is the, is the market going to contract? No, it's actually still projected to still can see a, a decent growth rate. And so so that's where I like to take that step back and say, OK, well, is this something systemic that we really should be worried about? Right. Is this one of those black swan events like 08 or, you know, the covid sell off? And I again, I don't know 100 percent. Nobody does. But this, there, there's not that kind of uh, underlying data to, to state that that's really what's, what's happening here, right? We're not seeing the housing market, you know, go under. We're not seeing, you know, the entire, the entire financial sector go under. Um, I do want to take a second, though. I mean, we are still seeing some things that, that are a little bit disturbing, but, but that's what I think is kind of uh, exacerbating the fears in the market, Right. Uh, like this last week, Peloton took a big hit, right? They had some issues with you know, with some of the production and, and purchase. So Peloton took a hit. Netflix, that was an interesting thing. That was, that was you know, basically Thursday and Friday. That was, it was, and that's another interesting thing too this week is we're seeing kind of this, this, this really, really whipsaw effect in the markets because I think, you know, we see people, it's, it's like we're trying to really still get that growth engine. We want to still see that it's, that it's running, right? We're, we're. We're a little bit greedy that way. And so we're seeing these daily returns where it's like just a couple of days ago, uh, NASDAQ was up two, two and a half percent most of the day. Well, I think it was on Thursday. All my days kind of bleed together, so you'll have to bear with me here. But we're talking a two and a half percent um, rebound, right? Looking awesome. In fact, had that kind of had that really stuck, I mean, they're totally different. We're having a totally different conversation right now. Well, that all of a sudden peters out and boom, it drops off. Why? Netflix, right? Netflix subscribe, you know, subscriber rates were under and, and their stock started to fall. So, and again, where, where the S&P 500, where tech is such a prevalent part of people's portfolios, a little bit over, we've overindulged a little bit, in my opinion. In our portfolios, we've shifted away from, from tech a little bit more, uh, more so than most people in the market. But the the because of that again that's where we're seeing this like kind of this ripple effect where okay well you know some tech's taking a beating right because again we know that the market's got to slow down we know interest rates are going up so kind of that speculation is is not really people aren't wanting to take that risk anymore so it's a little bit exacerbated but like 
um, Procter and Gamble, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, all of those, a lot of those bigger players, great earnings reports, great revenue data, right? Things still looked good. So, yeah, you know, again, I don't, I don't always like to look at the individual stock to paint the big picture, but my point is, is it volatile? Are, you know, kind of some of those bigger home run hitting stocks taking a beating? Yes, absolutely. There's volatility. It's it, the markets are a little bit upset right now. Is it the end of, of everything? No, it's not. It really is not. A lot of the major analysts I read, a lot of the data that we look at still is projecting growth this year. Not, not growth in the sense of like go buy growth stocks. I'm talking about an, an, an ex, uh, uh, improved market, you know, market growth by the end of the year. And I'm sticking to that for, for right now, right? Again, there's still enough base information, enough um, you know, economic data that, that I feel like, look, there's, it's, it's going to be a much tougher fight this year, right? It's going to be a lot more difficult this year to generate that return. Yes. But again, yeah, eight to 10%, but the, again, the tougher, the tougher fight, right? So last year we had, you know, about, we had about five, corrections right in that three to five percent range last year and you know we within week a week week and a half we recovered every time um i don't necessarily think i mean nobody knows how many corrections or, or you know things we're going to experience in a, in a year but obviously we're already coming into 2022 with you know what a seven percent to ten percent you know downturn in the market depending on which part of the market you look at so we're gonna have more of that so um anyways just just food for thought right there's volatility people are nervous about the inflation we're nervous about interest rates going up but it's not the end of the world it's not so you know take that for for what it's worth um the uh and like like we talked about too there's there's still a lot of good baseline data that we're we're looking at so Anyways, as always, you know, we're, we, we love the feedback. We love comments. We love hearing from you. So please, please, please feel free to reach out to us anytime. And for, you know, our clients that listen to this too, as always, we're happy to, to chat about the nuts and bolts. And, you know, a lot of you, we, we do have a lot of, you know, conversations fairly regularly and, and we appreciate that. But, you know, as people have concerns, we're happy to chat, happy to discuss. And for those of you that, that aren't clients of ours, you know, feel free to reach out to us anytime. Um, you can find us at myprosperteam.com. That's our advisory firm. And obviously this podcast, tieandrye.com. Feel free to reach out anytime. So thanks for the listen. We appreciate it. Um, oh, I do want to take a few minutes too at the end. So uh, last week we finished off our, we had a little contest for some of our listeners who, uh, who, who, chimed in with their little, we, we asked people to submit their ETF portfolio, exchange traded fund portfolio. And I'm happy to announce the winner of that. So penniless bull, right? He's actually a good friend of mine. He, uh, he was awesome. He did a great job. Even with some of that volatility coming into 2020 uh, here into 2022, his portfolio still was up over 2%. From so the timeline was December fifteenth through January fifteenth, and so he was up over two percent. So which is great. He he actually you know beat the market in the same time frame. So so great work. And uh, um, big dog trader, big dog trader was our that's that these are names. So you know obviously that's whoever big dog trader listening to us. He knows he knows who he is. Uh, he he took some beatings. So he was down. Uh, he was down over 30% in, in the last month. It's all right. At least you tried. We appreciate you, you uh, participating. So so good job, Penniless Bull. We've got some AirPod Pros that we're going to send you away. And again, as always, we appreciate the feedback. We appreciate you know, people you know, sharing, um, you know, sharing your thoughts, sharing your concerns with us, and reaching out to us. So next week, we'll come back, Ryan and I. We'll have uh, another full episode, and, and we'll do another Market Mini, but... Again, as always, we thanks we thank you for the listen, and uh, we're excited to keep bringing you market information. So again, don't don't be uh, too over. I mean, obviously, be stressed if you want, but 
Uh, you know, take a deep breath. It's okay. And this is part of, you know, part of what the markets do sometimes. You see these corrections. So, all right. Have a great weekend. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening to the Ty and Rye, the Finance Guys podcast today. If you like what you heard, go ahead and hit subscribe. That way you won't miss any future episodes. Also, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Ty and Rye podcast. Also, check us out at myprosperteam.com. Thanks. We will see you next week.